Right, what have we got today? Well, I've got a Retina 3C, that's three big C. Looks to be in quite tidy condition. The focus is a bit stiff. Viewfind is quite clean, that's quite good. This one's got a, came to me, it was described as having a wind on problem. And the film advance lever is locked at the moment, shutter's not cocked. I have to press the film release button. I can swing the advance lever. That swings normally. The shutter fires. The film advance lever is locked again. I can unlock it by pressing the film release button, but I shouldn't have to. And the shutter fires again. So there's certainly something wrong with this, and it's to do with the, the lock that uh, should release this to wind on again at the end of the stroke, and is not doing it. So there's a few options of things that could go wrong there. There's a spring that could be broken. The arm could be bent or damaged at the end, meaning that it doesn't latch up correctly onto the cam. But uh, I'll dig into it, and we'll see what we can find. So, I'll have to gather some tools. Have I got them here? Yes, I think I've got enough. Right, so I'm going to start by removing the meter setting dials at the top here. And I'm checking to see that with this dial rotated as far as it will go clockwise, I'm watching to see where that white line is. See where it lines up with, and it lines up about a third of the way up from 16, between the 16 and the 17. And if I put it back there, well, I'll put it back exactly where it came from. So we remove that, open the back of the camera, put something through the fork of the rewind, spin off the rewind knob. Two screws here. One at the end. Now I notice that the strap lug's a bit pushed in. Means the camera has been dropped on its end at some stage. Holding my finger firmly on the top of the meter so it doesn't lift off with the top. I'm wriggling the top off. This piece of black rubber fell out. That fits up in the corner of the top cover here and it holds the meter in position. Don't lose that piece of black rubber. The meter, in this case, is just sitting in there. It's got a little tab on the end of the case which hooks under the arm here on that strap lug. So we can pop the meter to one side. I'll lift off the film release button because I'm not particularly interested in the state of that. So this button here, that's depressed by the shutter release button. It should unlock the film advance. And if I hold my finger on this lever, this lever is the end of film lever. I'm holding that down. I can cock it. The lever comes back into position as I'd expect. When I press down on the shutter release, it does not press down far enough to release the film release here. I'll see what happens if I adjust that. I'm looking to see if anything's obviously bent. I can't see anything obvious there. Basically what's happening is the shutter is releasing before it gets to the stage where the film would release. So we'll crank that up a couple of turns and see what happens. It doesn't latch down into position. 
even when it was pressed down far enough it doesn't latch into position. That suggests to me that the return spring on this shaft, this release here, is broken. This should swing in and out as it latches into the cam at the bottom. So I suspect we've just got a broken spring on the bottom of this piece. I'll dig down that far and bring you back and show you what I find. Well here, as I'm just about to get the leatherette patch off the rewind, off the advanced lever, I notice that that leatherette has got a very thread worn look about it. It's like it's lost its plastic top. I can see straight through to the uh, underlying cloth underneath. That tells me that that most likely was glued back at some stage with an inappropriate adhesive which has melted that plastic. The other leatherette looks fine by comparison so I don't think the same person who glued that back had been into this part. Well as I suspected this arm is just flapping around. Its return spring is broken and so when it's when the release pops up at the bottom, it should be able to drop up onto this cam. But there's nothing to make it swing across there. So it doesn't. It just lies around loose. So we've got a small broken spring here. That's the cause of the problem with the film advance. Um, apart from that, the camera looks quite tidy. Certainly could do with the service. But if it hadn't been for that broken spring, it would probably have limped on for another decade, I would imagine. So, once I get that arm out there, I'll show you refitting that spring and we'll put it back together. But that won't be until after I've serviced the camera. Now, I did say that this was a uh, quite a tidy example for a 3C. But now that I've had it to bits, I've noticed something that you'd be probably see here. All of these bright marks here in the chamber, in the film chamber, are deep scratches through the paint and into the aluminium body underlying it. Here, in this little channel here, this is where the film sprocket would run. There's actually pieces of film embedded in the surface there. Now, somebody's made all these marks and they've made them for some particular purpose. Now, the most likely reason for this is that somebody failed to load the film correctly. And so instead of having it tucked in correctly to the, into the slot in the take-up spool, they left the end flapping. And what happens then is it wraps itself around the sprocket shaft until such stage as you cannot physically fit any more film in that space. And almost certainly that's what's happened here, is someone has failed to load the film correctly. They, the film has wrapped itself around the sprocket until it was absolutely jam-packed, crammed in there, could not move anything. And then they have used a sharp instrument possibly the end of a knife, something of that nature, possibly the end of a sharp screwdriver, nail scissors I would imagine is probably the weapon of choice, to try and get the film off that sprocket shaft. And in doing so, they've scarred up the bodywork along here. So I'll have to make sure that there are no high points here that would rub on the film. I think that probably it'll clear those places, but I'll have to make sure that there are no high points, nothing that could scare scratch the film as it passes over that point. The sprocket of course sits in here so that area should be well back behind where any film should ever travel but I just need to ensure that there is no nowhere in the film path that has any sharp points that could cause this grief. Those marks were probably completely hidden by the sprocket. I hadn't noticed them earlier. I doubt if, if the sprocket was installed it may not actually be possible to see there, see those marks. No, they're pretty, pretty effectively hidden in there. You imagine if your spool was in there and your sprocket was in there, you'd be very 
be very hard to spot that there was anything amiss down that slot, that hole there. So, that's an, an interesting thing. I don't remember seeing that for a while. I'm just cleaning up this body now. All the other components are in the uh, degreaser. And uh, once they've had sufficient time soaking, they'll move to the ultra ultrasonic cleaner to clean all the old grease and dirt and filth off them before I rebuild the camera. Well, I thought I'd show you that. The other thing, of course, that was in here was film chips. There were lots and lots of film chips. Film chips. Uh, the little pieces of film that you get in between the sprocket holes on the 35mm film. And typically you see film chips built up in this place underneath the take-up spool where somebody has reached the end of the film and uh, just kept winding and the sprocket shaft has uh, just cut through the, the film torn out the sprockets. So that's again is another thing you sometimes find with cameras is probably only half a dozen film chips there. They don't look very harmful but these things can get away. Um, in this case they've been trapped in place by the grease but uh, sometimes they're not trapped by the grease and they get, get away and loose inside the camera. And in some cases, I'm thinking of retina reflexes or retina 3S. A little film chip like that could find its way into the back of the shutter and jam a shutter up and stop the camera from working entirely. So you certainly want to take some care when you're loading film so that you don't end up with a nasty mess like that. And you also want to take care when you get to the end of the film to make sure you don't rip out the sprocket holes and end up with film chips running loose through your camera. Right, back to work. Well, I'm looking at this uh, sprocket shaft now and I'm checking to see if that shows any signs of damage. And as you can see, that's got matching scratches all the way around the shaft where somebody had forced something down behind there in an effort to dislodge whatever film was tangled around there. Again, this is down below the level of the film. The film should never be down touching the shaft at that point. The film travels up here but I'll need to make sure that there are no sharp points there, sharp edges that could catch on things. I do not want the film getting scuffed or scoured or damaged in any shape at all. So that's just more, more damage. There's a whole series of deep scratches on this side. And that's just more damage from this, whoever did this clever trick here. So I hope there are no more surprises with this camera. Alright, I've pretty much finished servicing this camera now. I've got it back to the stage where I'm ready to refit that uh, lever. And uh, this has all been stripped and cleaned, stripped right down to the chassis. So now I've got to show you how to replace that broken spring and put that lever back in place, after which the film advance mechanism should all work correctly. Well here is the, the lever we were talking about and the remains of the spring are still fixed on the base here. I've got to get that off. There we have it, just that tiny little loop of spring. I'll zoom you in a little bit. That's all that there was left. It began its life. Looking like that one. And that long arm was the piece that had broken off right at this point. So now I've just got to check this spring, make sure that it's in a good shape. I've just reclaimed this from one of my parts. Get rid of that scrap. 
and I have to hook the spring into place. Not 100% happy with the shape of that spring. I'll see if I can uh, adjust its shape slightly. That's better. Now I have to hook it over this arm. And check that it sits down into place, that the spring is sitting back into that recess. That all looks good. Now I'll reassemble it for the camera. I'll take that film advance lever off because I don't need that there at the moment. It only needed to be there while I was putting the rest of the uh, mechanism back together. Check that it lines up with the hole at the top of the camera. Turn it back over. Make sure that the spring falls correctly back into position in the recess. And you can see immediately that we have spring tension here. It pops back into place. It holds that lever in contact with that cam. Alright, so we have our spring and screw from the top that need to be installed. Check and that screw is going in square. Looks like it is. Check that make sure that spring is tucked down neatly. That looks good. Run that screw down a bit. It has to be low enough that the shutter release arm will actually clear the top of it. So slightly more than that. That looks fine as a good place to start it. There it is at the base of the camera, all installed. And at that point, I can uh, put the cover plate back on there and put the film advance lever back in place. So I'll do that. Bring you back in a second. Okay, after a little bit of work, I've got the bottom of the camera all closed up. The film advance is now working correctly. I have adjusted the position of the screw here. I'll zoom you in a bit. Adjusted the position of this screw here so that the shutter will release at the same point in the stroke of the shutter release as the film advance is unlocked to allow you to wind on to the next frame. Or at least I thought I had. I'm obviously off a little bit here. Oh, that, my release was not sitting on the top. That's better. Swing that arm across. Yeah, I've just heard that release the film advance before the shutter fired. Yeah, that's, that's good. So that's what the problem with that thing was. It was just that broken spring. This camera is ready now to have the uh, top cover cleaned up, put back on. Uh, final adjustments of rangefinder and check the focus of the lens and things of that nature. And then it can go back to its owner. <laughs>